I tried digital for years now. I started off by drawing my favorite subjects, fan arts. Searching on Google for tutorials, saving many of them, and practicing some. The results never stick, and of course I was looking for a quick way to get it. I realized that I can't get it if I don't keep at it. My digital works were either left to be unfinished forever, or the result left a bitter taste in my mouth. Today, it's my goal to change that. Getting the idea from my teacher, I planned a study that will introduce me to a new team, with guides to keep me on the right path. I want to become better with environments, so the first theme is rocks, stones, mountains, and other landforms. I want to learn all about them so I can be confident with painting outdoors. Here is how I approach the study. As you're doing a material study, access the source material if you can. That was why I picked up a few lovely stones as I was walking in the neighborhood. To notify you, that was a few months ago. If you don't have the source material, you can look up some images or videos if you have it, it's better to get familiar with it. Look under different lights, put it under various positions, and get closer from different angles. Take mental and visual notes. If we get back to our topic, I chose a big brush with some texture to search for the shapes. Most material studies on the internet are worked on a sphere form. But today I want to learn the edges and natural forms too. The brush is small enough to make broad shapes with local colors, big enough to focus on the mission. I detailed only if I need or want to. I worked by downsizing the brush only when I felt like the details I'm working on were smaller than the brush size. Also, I realized that I didn't share my whole drawings last time by thinking it might be boring. But the purpose of these videos was to show the process. I'll be waiting until I share this video with you to decide if I was right on my intuition. My study was going well, except that operating a screen recorder and Photoshop at the same time was putting a lot of strain on my computer. It was slowing down a lot and taking painstakingly long to load one sweep of color. I needed a new way if I wanted to record my screen. I created two vlogs at that time, hoping that a short and flexible format would be easier in my workload but it was harder to bring it together as I had to work on my finals. I needed a new way if I wanted to work on my studies and produce videos. In that time I made a laptop holder for better ventilation and posture. I picked up Autodesk sketchbook and worked on script writing. 
My courses are not happening, so I have more free time, even if most of it is used for my graduation project. I worked with Sketchbook a few times now. It's great for product sketching, but will it work as good for painting? To get familiar, like I mentioned, I looked up a few things about rocks. I want to share what I learned with you. I found six images of rocks as reference on the internet. I would love to paint and show more examples, but then this study could go on forever. As rock cycle affects their appearance, I was curious to know about it. First type is an igneous rock. They can be formed underground, usually taking hundreds or thousands of years. They can form quickly after an eruption too. Of course, this creates a difference between those that form slowly and suddenly. Those that cool underground, like pegmatite, are large. These have visible crystals on the surface. Those that form with eruption cool quickly and they don't have enough time to form large crystals. Their crystals are too small to see with naked eye. Sometimes rocks can form with bits and pieces around the volcano. This stuff is an example I found. Another example is sedimentary rocks. They are exposed to forces like wind, water and ice and these forces can leave marks on them. They are formed with organic and mineral matters, as their appearance hints to this with different layers and compositions. The ones I chose like sandstone, shale and chert are sedimentary types. Last are metamorphic rocks. Some minerals from before go through reorganization of grains and minerals. These happen under massive pressures, volumes and temperatures. Schist is formed when some sedimentary rocks have been put under compressive forces, heat and chemical activity. Now I feel better with sketchbook, although I could have picked a better brush. The one I'm using is too textured that you can't create sharp edges. I could have used lasso tool to help with that too, but I didn't want to use it today as I was practicing the push-pull of colors and edges. Now that I feel more confident in digital, I want to add a few more tools next time. I will be studying the landforms and different formations rocks can take. There are some breathtaking nature to see and more to learn. I hope you stay in touch for the second part. Just in case you would like to join and study with me, I wanted to share some videos so you can use as reference. I've already filmed these before. They were sitting in my hard drive all this time, so at least they will be of use. If you really decide to join, even if you use a different reference, I would love to check out what you did, so please send it my way. Thank you for joining me today for part 1. I would like to know if you do digital painting, which program do you use, how did you start? Wish you a delightful day and hope to see you soon.